guys from all over. Um, if you're interested, let me know. I'm going to get you an email address and get you the link to the meeting. That'll be Tuesday at 7. All right. Um, there will be an Easter egg hunt after church. It will be down on the Parsonage lawn. And uh, you are certainly welcome to come and be a part of that. Uh, any children up to Erica? Where's, what's the age? What's the age, Erica? 45, I believe. <laughs> <laughs>
Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one in the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. I invite you to pray with me. God of hope, in the midst of death, you call forth life. When all hope seemed gone, you raised Jesus from the grave. We came before you today longing for your life-giving presence. God of new life, raise us up with all your people. Lift us from the tombs of our despair and doubt, that we may rejoice in your power over death. God of joy, fill our hearts with hallelujahs as we sing your praises. Glory to God.
debate this morning. I've uh, presented to Lent a wide variety of affirmations of faith that we use in the United Methodist Church. And this morning, I'm going to use the one that's probably most familiar to all of you, the Apostles' Creed. Please join me in reading that together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. And just a reminder for those of you who didn't hear it before, in our creeds where you hear the word Catholic and it's not capitalized, that word just means universal. So it's universal. <laughs> to do. I'd like for us all um, in, the, in the life and death and resurrection of Christ to uh, turn and share joyous peace with one another and in a safe and socially distanced way, of course. So you may sign ASL or you may heart with your fingers or use your voices to greet one another on this beautiful Easter morning. So please, at this time, turn to your neighbors and pass your fingers. Please bow your heads In the evening, when the disciples meet, frightened behind locked doors, you come to them with words of peace. For wicked plots have failed, and the cruelty of the world has come to nothing. And the betrayal and the denial of friends have not prevailed. Life-giving God, we give you thanks, for Jesus has risen. He comes to us with words of peace. Come to us today in government rooms where politicians meet, in city boardrooms where executives plan, in courtrooms where lawyers debate. Come with words of peace. In hospital rooms where people are waiting, in prison cells where people are afraid. In homes where people struggle to make ends meet, come with words of peace. Come to us whenever we are afraid, whenever we are grieving. Come to us now, we pray in silence, for those we care about or are worried about. So please, at this time, take about 30 seconds to pray for those who you know need God's intervention and care. Despite the strong and solid doors we lock to protect ourselves, to shut out the world, come to us with words of peace, Lord. This Easter, breathe on us again with your spirit, for you have overcome evil. The wicked plots fail, and the cruelty of the world comes to nothing, and the betrayal and denial of friends do not prevail. Renew us in the power of your spirit that we may open the doors and go out into the world to bring words of peace to the people we meet. Renew us in the power of your spirit that we may have life in your name and go wherever you send us. In Jesus' name we pray. And now may we lift our voices together to pray the prayer our beloved Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
What kind of man welcomes the company of the hurting, helpless, and the hopeless? What kind of a man can heal the pain with a single soft touch? What kind of a man multiplies hope and freedom as easily as he does fish and bread? Who else can turn our dusty old religion into a brand new relationship? What kind of man would claim to be God in the flesh, but then allow that same flesh to be torn apart? What kind of a man would embrace betrayal? Insults. Torture. Mockery. And death. And yet, live to tell about it. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody. Who could speak with such authoritative words and yet drench them with compassion? Who could be strong enough to still the storms yet be so meek and humble? Who could allow the hands that created the universe to also be nailed into a wooden cross? Who could choose patience despite deserving immediate and complete obedience? Who could be blameless and without fault, but still endure the judgment others deserve? Nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Nobody. Who will love us like Him? Who will be with us when all others have left? Who comforts us in suffering? Who is our peace in the midst of anxiety? Who reassures me when my mind is drowning in doubt? Who accepts me as I am with no strings attached? Who else would die for me while I was sinking in sin? Who 
else can turn the grave into Easter morning? Nobody. 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 Nobody but Jesus. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Tell 
the other disciples what she had heard and seen. When Mary realized that the man standing before her was not the gardener, she had imagined, but was actually Jesus, alive and well, Mary said, Rabboni. Now, that word does mean teacher, but it's not exactly the same as the word rabbi. Rabboni is also a way to address God. For Mary, that one word in that moment had to be the most joyous word ever spoken. We read the empty tomb account, or read it, excuse me, from the Gospel of John in our Light of Christ reading today. But John is probably the last of the four Gospels that was written. Scholars believe that the first Gospel account was Mark's. And as the Gospel of Mark stands in most Bibles today, the last chapter, chapter 16, has 20 verses. Verses 9 through 20 of verse 16 tell of Jesus' appearance to Mary Magdalene at the tomb, to two other disciples walking on the road, and to all 11 of the remaining disciples as they sit around the table. Jesus speaks to the eleven about their mission to spread the good news to the whole creation and tells them of the signs that will come to them when they do that. And then finally, in verses 19 and 20, Jesus ascends to his Father, and with the Lord's help, the disciples take up their role as proclaimers of the good news. That's chapter 16 of Mark in a nutshell. However, Many Bible scholars believe that the ending of Mark was edited at some time from later date. And the reason they believe that is, for one thing, Mark contains no account of Jesus' birth, and the earliest known copies of the Gospel that we have today end with uh, verse 16:8, which reads, So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, Mark does not tell of an encounter with Jesus at the tomb. Instead, he says the women encountered the stone rolled away from the entrance to the tomb. And seated to the right of the entrance was a young man in white robes who says to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place that they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. But what if things had ended, as in verse 8, and the women were too afraid to tell anyone that they had in the tomb and met the angel and the tomb was empty. What if our knowledge of the resurrection story ended with the empty tomb? No appearances afterward? No Peter jumping for joy into the water to get Jesus, to get to Jesus who's on the shore cooking them breakfast? No feed my sheep? What if it all church have had the faith to keep on going? Now in John's account, Mary doesn't even know it is Jesus standing before her until he says her name. We all know who is speaking to us when they say our name. It's so personal. There's a distinct difference between someone that you barely know calling out your name at a graduation ceremony, especially a college one, and your mother calling your name when you were in trouble. I can still, to this day, hear my mom in my head yelling, Jim, Lee, Raymond, 
<laughs> there was no mistaking when I heard that who was speaking those words. You just know by the way they call your name. And Jesus said, Mary. And she knew him instantly. The stone was rolled away. Whether the angels rolled it away or it rolled away because God caused the ground to shake. We know Mary and the other women didn't do it. They couldn't have. It was much too heavy and the tomb was guarded by Roman soldiers. So surely no mere stone could keep all that was Yeshua, our salvation, inside a cold tomb. The tomb was empty. The stone was rolled away. So what is that stone for you? Pain? Depression? Age? Divorce? Cancer? Betrayal? Loss of a loved one? Loneliness? Addiction? Grief? These stones may have power over you and over me, but no stone has power over Jesus. No stone has power over Yeshua. Salvation. The stone was rolled away. As we've noted already, the Gospels vary in their accounts of the resurrection. They have different numbers of women going to the tomb, different accounts of angels, different accounts of which disciple got there first. But the one common denominator in all four Gospels is that scene where it's just Mary Magdalene and Jesus. Jesus says to her in John, do not cling to me. In many movies and Sunday school materials, Jesus is pictured as almost transparent looking, as if he were a ghost. I don't think that's it. I believe that Jesus was as solid as you or as me after the resurrection. However, I do think that Mary would have had the impulse to throw herself into Jesus' arms and hold on to him so tightly that she might have broken a rib. She wouldn't have wanted to let after all that had transpired in the last three days. When Jesus says, do not cling, the word cling can also mean cleave, which means stick to. Do not cleave to me. What if Jesus wasn't saying, let go of me, in that sense? What if he was saying, let me go? Let me go. Jesus was giving his ministry to Mary and to the disciples, and he was saying to her, you've got to run things now. Jesus gave the ministry to the disciples, and they, in turn, over the centuries, have given it to us. That old phrase, you are the only Jesus some people will ever see, is frighteningly true today. We, you and me, are the hands and feet and eyes and ears and heart of Jesus Christ. Jesus is here because we are here. When our youth go on mission trips, they are Jesus in this world. When the women knit and crochet prayer shawls and blankets for those in need, they are Jesus in this world. When we provide a meal, <coughs> when we give away water at the parade, or provide changing stations for babies at the festival, we are Jesus in the world. When we provide a backpack 
or a friendly word, someone in our community. We have Jesus in this world. Jesus is part of us. He exists. Here. Now. Who else can do that? Who could be born 2,000 plus years ago, yet be here and exist in the here and now through us? Nobody.
lives to be made. Not because we are strong, but because we are weak. We come not because any goodness of our own gives us the right to come, but because we need mercy and help. We come because we love the Lord and we love to love him more. We come because he loved us and gave himself for us. We come and meet the risen Christ together, for we are his body. May Resurrection's God be with you. And also with you. This is the day to offer yourselves to God. We open our hearts to the one who fills them with grace. Join in the glad songs of creation this day. Our voices praise the one who opens wide the gates of life. When only emptiness stretched out, you spoke at that time, joyous God. And goodness and beauty sprang forth. Swallows darting in the skies, young rabbits scampering in the grass, hippos splashing in rivers. All this wonder and joy was your gift to your children created in your image. But we ran to play with death when sin opened the gates of seduction. Time after time after time, you sent the prophets to remind us of your never-ending love. But we chose to remain in sin's tomb. The stone of our rebellion is locking us away. So you sent your hopeful heart, your grace made flesh, so that we might not be given over to death. With those who see and believe, and with those who stand in question, we lift our Easter songs to you. Holy, holy, holy are you. God who has made you say, all creation celebrates your constant love. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who is revealed on this morning. Hosanna in the highest. When he could have come to your glory, God who alone is holy, Jesus chose to become human at that time, so we might be filled with your grace. When we stood against the wall wondering if anyone noticed us, he came to take us by the hand to teach us new dance steps. When our lives crumble around us and we lie scattered on the ground, he gathers us up, reshaping us into your beloved community. When we were unable to break the power of evil over us, he allowed sin to toss him aside like a pebble in a shoe until he was raised from the tomb because you refused to give us over to death. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take. Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, and he gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As we stand today before the empty tomb, celebrating the great news of this day, we would have that faith, which is a mystery. Christ has died, so sin could not belong to us. Christ was raised, so death could not belong to us. Christ will come to hold us in the steadfast love and hope. At this time, wherever we find ourselves at home, in apartments, in care facilities, or finally able to be back in shared spaces, pour out your spirit upon your people and on the gifts of the Feast of the Resurrection. May 
the bread which is broken open like the tomb. Strengthen us so we may go to rebuild sh shattered hopes, to bind up the hurts of the world. May the cup which is filled with the fruits of your steadfast love nourish us, leave the shadows of our fears and doubts, to stand with the lonely and forgotten, to listen to the cries of the world. And in that time to come, when we will be gathered with our sisters and brothers of every place and of every moment, we will sing your praises, God in community, holy in one, as you hold on to us forever. And everyone said, Amen. Now you may stand if you wish.